In this lesson, we're going to pick up where we left off. I'm going to now demonstrate the benefits of having an Open Directory Master by creating a user centrally on the Open Directory Master. So I'm going to clean up this terminal, quit out of it. And we currently are looking at our local users inside of server app. And the user that we had set up the scenario about was Nick. So what we need to do is take Nick out of the local users. So I'm just going to delete that account by clicking on the minus sign. It's going to warn me that this is a permanent deletion. That's fine. It may take a moment for it to remove Nick and then refresh the screen. Once that's occurred, we can now go from local users to local network users, where we see we only have the directory administrator number one right now. I'm going to add a new user, and this is going to be Nick. And we'll just leave the account name as Nick in all lowercase. I'll set a password. We want the home folder to be a shared home folder, but right now we don't have file sharing turned on. So I'm going to have to leave it as local only for the time being. Click Done. Now let's go take care of setting up a home folder. And for that, we need to go into file sharing. I'm going to turn it on. You may or may not have SharePoints listed as I do, the administrator's public folder. That's fine if you do. We're going to add in the server HD's users folder. You may have a different listing of hard drives. That's fine. You just want to find the user home folders. And I'm going to choose that. And it is now guest accessible. I'm going to change that a little bit. I want to edit the SharePoint, and we're going to make sure that this is available for home directories over AFP, and then we'll say done. I could take off the guest access. It's not important at this point. I just want to demonstrate the network home folders. Also, if you noticed, we do have that Nick home folder from before. Now, if Nick was an actual user, we would want to keep that home folder, but I'm going to just clean it up and delete it. So I'm going to go to the Go menu, choose Computer, go into Server HD again, go into Users, find the NIC folder, and delete it with Command Delete. I'll have to authenticate as the admin, and that removes him from the home folders. That will be recreated though. Now we have NIC pretty much set up, except we got to go back into his account. Just double clicking on it will bring it back up. And we need to change the home folder from local only to users. We could put a disk quota limit on Nick. I'm not going to. We've just created a fairly default user. One other thing, if you like to, you can change the pictures for your users to reflect their different personalities. Okay, so Nick has been created there. Now we need to bind in a computer. And in this case, I'll use my administration computer so that we can test out Nick's home folder. So I'm going to remove this local Nick user. Again, we would want to track down the home folder and use it again if it had any information in it that was worthwhile. In this case, I'm just going to delete it. And we need to now go down to the login options. Now, before I click on that, remember we're in the system preferences, and this is the users and groups pane. So I'm going to login options. Here we have network account server. We need to click on that join button. And here we can type in the name of our server. And if you click on the disclosure triangle, you will see other servers on the local network that are directory servers. You can either find an open directory server as I did or an active directory server. Note, you could click on the button here to go into directory utility. We'll see another way shortly on how to get to open directory utility. So I'm gonna click on okay. The first message says, do we want to trust the SSL certificates from the server? The second message, if it pops up, will warn you that they're not trusted. That's because they may have been self-signed and your computer doesn't know if it can trust them or not. Here's the second message. We'll continue along. And our computer is now binding into our Rock One server. This has made, so far, what we call a non-authenticated or a non-trusted binding. We could make a trusted binding. Actually, I'm just going to use this opportunity to skip the trusted binding. Most of your client computers, you're not going to need to do this. The SSL encryption will take care of the security for you. It's only when you're connecting in a client server that you really need to make a trusted binding. 
All right, so our computer is now bound in. I know this because there is a green dot next to the name rock one foamingrocks.com here in the lower part of this window. We could take a look at that with the edit button, and you might even have multiple servers listed there. I'm going to click done for right now. And to test this out, we need to log out and log back in. But before I do that, I'm going to show the command line fans another way of testing it. There's a command called ID, and I can say ID Nick. And it will tell me that Nick is a user. Here's his ID and his user ID number. And it shows that he's a member of some groups, including work group and so on and so forth. We could also read his directory service record by a command called DSCL. And once you're in interactive mode, it works a little bit like a file system. So I could say change directory, LDAP, and tab completion does work. And I need to list what's next. So I can change directory into rock1foamingrocks.com and then list what's next. We see a whole bunch of objects that we can use, but down here at the bottom, notice that just above the prompt, it says users. So we want to change directory into users, and we can list out the users that are there, and notice that Nick is one of those users, just between Duradmin and the VPN user, so we could say read Nick. And that is Nick's record, and it even tells us that his home directory path is network servers rock one foamingrocks.com users nick. So that's a very good test to see that we are using our directory services appropriately. Now, we are going to quit out of system preferences, quit out of the terminal, log out, and log back in. We are here at the login window, and it may take a moment before our computer recognizes that it has been bound into a directory service and shows us a other window to use or we can click backwards on this back arrow, and there it is. So let's click on Other, type in Nick's name and password. This will set up a new default network account. So it's a default network home folder, the docs at the bottom, we get the default background picture, the menu bar is all the default settings. So this shows that binding into a Mac OS X open directory server is fairly easy and straightforward. Let's log out. I'm going to switch back over to my Rock One server. And if we take a look in the Finder by going to the Go menu and going to Recent Folders, and we find the Users folder, we will see that Nick's home folder was recreated when he logged in. Now, that's a default home folder. We didn't save anything from before, but that's okay for this demonstration. That means that Nick can now go from computer to computer if they are all bound into the directory server and he can use his home folder from any of those other computers. His settings will move with him, files will move with him, because really they're not stored locally, they are stored on a network file server.